You know, I would like to give a shout out to Senator Bob Hasegawa. Uh, he was recently the only member of our state legislature that voted against something that, you know, the workers' comp defense industry was calling the Dolph Fix. And, you know, this bill passed by the legislature, every single member of the Washington House, every single member of the Senate, and the governor signed on to this thing. The only one who stood up and, and said no and dissented was Senator Hasegawa. Well, what was the Dolph fix? Well, it turns out that case originated in my law firm, and I was the attorney. And Mr. Dolph was a severely injured worker who worked for the Renton School District. And what happened is uh, his injury was terrible. It involved various different types of injury, but also head injury. And Mr. Dolph was out trying to get medical attention. And one day he's told by his medical providers that he can no longer get medical attention and he doesn't know why. And so he says, hey, What's going on with that? And they say, you better call your claims manager. Well, the Renton School District has a third-party administrator, and their third-party administrator had a 30-year claims manager that interacted with Mr. Dolph. And Mr. Dolph called up and said, you know, I need to get access to care. Mr. Dolph was uh, clearly upset that he wasn't able to get the care. And he told the claims manager that he did not ever receive a copy of a closing order from the Department of Labor and Industries. A 30-year claims manager knows what that means. A 30-year claims manager knows there's been a failure of service to the injured worker. And so what happened in Dolph's case was the claims manager said, oh, Mr. Dolph, um, your case is closed. Now your only option is to file a reopening application. Mr. Dolph, not having an attorney, thought he had to do what the claims manager said. Only a reopening application was not his proper legal remedy. Instead, his proper legal remedy was to file a protest to the closing order. It had never been communicated. Therefore, the statute of limitations on protests had never begun to run. He was entirely allowed under law to file a protest, and a 30-year claims manager certainly knew it. But she deceived Mr. Dolph. And then she sent a copy of his claim file and a copy of the closing order to Mr. Dolph. Mr. Dolph came to me, and... I recognized the same law that the claims manager was required to also recognize, that Mr. Dolph's case had never actually closed because he'd never been served his closing order. And so the, the Renton School District, uh, with their TPA in the Dolph case, they took the position that his case had closed and that because they'd sent him the closing order, they had sent him a copy and it was okay, he should have protested within the time period that they sent it to him. But what happens? Well, there's a document dump. Here's your claim file. Go through it. And by the way, I'm specifically telling you as a 30-year claims manager, I'm telling you that you have no right to actually appeal the order that I'm sending you. And so naturally he didn't. When he came to me, we took that issue up we took it to the Board of Industrial Insurance Appeals. Initially, the board ruled in favor of the school district, but on a petition for review, the full board came back and said no, the claim had never properly closed because the closing order had never been properly communicated. The Renton School District went and appealed that to Superior Court. Washington Law Center went to Superior Court and successfully defended the position of the board that in fact, Mr. Dolph's case had never closed. Not satisfied, the Renton School District appealed to the Court of Appeals. Washington Law Center once again went up and defended Mr. Dolph's rights. The Court of Appeals read RCW 5152.060 and said, you know, there's only one copy of a closing order 
It's the closing order that's issued by the Department of Labor and Industries. When an injured worker gets a closing order sent specifically from the department with specific notifications that it has to be appealed within a given time frame, this is sufficient to put the injured worker on notice, whereas, for example, throwing the documents together in a document dump and sending it to the injured worker with a deceiving communication that the only right the injured worker has is to go out and file a reopening application. The court said no, Dolph was never served, therefore uh, his case remained open. We won that case and the Renton School District, angry as it was, decided to get a legislative veto, which is to run back to the legislature and say what an injustice had happened to uh, the school district in Mr. Dolph's case. I'm quite certain nobody ever communicated the underlying facts to our legislature, the underlying facts of deception and malfeasance. And so the legislature did what the Renton School District asked it to do. And the only member of our legislature that dissented was Senator Hasegawa. So again, I want to thank Senator Hasegawa. And now I also want to ask the legislature, go back and think about it again, and this time do it right. And next time you're thinking about a legislative veto of something that has gone through judges at the Board of Industrial Insurance Appeals, the Superior Court, and then our Court of Appeals, before you as a legislature think to reverse all of that good and proper legal process, why don't you call a hearing and maybe have the injured worker's attorney testify as to the underlying facts? Why don't you open up the record and do a diligent job before just agreeing to rubber stamp a request by the Renton School District? We need to reverse the quote-unquote Dolph fix because now the legislature has, has changed that same RCW 51-52060 so that third-party administrators can serve their own orders if they find another injured worker like Mr. Dolph. That is a recipe for disaster. We have to avoid it. We have to rescind the Dolph fix.